fam. It is Saturday morning and so I wanted to go ahead and come on here and start the next Slayer Fest weekly reading vlog. I also do have kind of an update for you. After finishing the Dark Corners of the Night, I told y'all I was going to be starting A Hunger Like No Other by Cressley Cole to satisfy the prompt of Oz, but I got 30 minutes into that audiobook and I just couldn't handle it anymore. This is supposed to be like a paranormal romance series and from what I understand, it's like a romance between a vampire and a werewolf and literally this is how the book starts, y'all. You're getting like a preview of one of the main characters who has basically been in imprisoned under the city of Paris for probably hundreds of years. It doesn't actually say within the first 30 minutes, but all of a sudden he senses his mate there in Paris on the streets above and that fuels him to break through his chains after how long of being imprisoned. And he rushes out to the street and she's gone. But a week later he sees her and he basically charges at her and forces her to take him to her hotel. And that's when I stopped. I'm like, oh, okay. There's like no buildup or lead into this. And she's just like, okay, sure. Come to my hotel. It was too much y'all. I could not even handle it. I did not even even want to see where it was going. And I made the decision to go ahead and start Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. This is something that was originally on my TBR for April anyway, but I just didn't think I was going to get to it. So I was going to push it into May and it was also going to work to satisfy a prompt for the magical readathon. So luckily I'm going to be able to get to it now and I'm going to be able to satisfy one of those prompts. It satisfies the elemental studies prompt to read a book with flowers on the cover, which is one of the books that I need to read in order to become a beastmaster. And then next I will be reading the prompt to satisfy Darkindestad, which is to read a book focused around children or a book meant for children like a middle grade novel and that will be before we were yours by Lisa Wingate but that's the plan those might be the last two books that I can finish in April so I only just started Kingdom of the Cursed last night so I have no opinion I have no thoughts I'm still just trying to acclimate myself to the story and hopefully get a good chunk of it done this weekend that is the goal because I do not want it to take a long time for me to get through it is a 14 hour audiobook so that's seven hours of listening time I'm hoping that I can just push through it this weekend in terms of the plans for the day there aren't any I have spent the morning working working on the vlog that has to go up tomorrow, working on my TBR for May, doing some chores around the house. We are about to leave the house in a little while to go grocery shopping and then we're basically just coming straight back home. There is like not a lot going on at all today, which sometimes I just need y'all. I just need to be at home to get caught up on life. So boring, but that is the plan. I'll take you along if I can wherever we go and I'll give you reading updates as I have them. So check in later. It is later on Saturday afternoon. We've gotten done doing our errands and everything like that. And since I've gotten home, I've just been doing some more chores like cleaning out my car and cleaning around the house and things like that. What I really came on here to talk about is Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. And not so much talking about what the book is about or my feelings on it, but more like reading strategies for this book for any fantasy readers who might be like me. What do I mean by that? It took me a very long time to become interested in fantasy. I didn't really start fully liking fantasy as a genre until I want to say probably like 2018. So pretty recently, pretty late in my adult reading life. One of the reasons for that is I was always trying to put fantasy novels within the context of our world. Even if it was a high fantasy, completely in a made up world, it still didn't register with me. I was always trying to figure out where this fantasy world was in relation to earth and the United States and things like that. My brain could never fully shift from reality to fantasy. Even now, I still feel like I'm very much getting my feet wet with regard to fantasy. And there are specific things that I need to see in fantasy books in order for me to fully enjoy them and understand them because another thing about me is that I have a hard time connecting dots like it's not always easily apparent cause and effect you know like I'll see the effect but not necessarily know what the cause was or I'll see two events in books and not realize that one influenced the other or things like that so there are readers that are really really good at it and I am just not and so when I'm reading a fantasy book I really do like a slow build in the beginning I don't mind if it's info dumpy especially if it's related to world world building and historical context. And if you can hear that, Domino is doing something crazy on the couch. I don't even know, but she's being loud and obnoxious right now my life y'all. I can never just find a quiet place to sit down and film. All of this to say, Way of Kings isn't like this at all. Brandon Sanderson very much throws you in to the world of the Way of Kings and drops little things here and there about the world and how it operates now and things that happened in the past and there are eventually going to be things that likely all come together into one cohesive narrative but if you're like me and you have trouble following breadcrumbs and fitting those things together, it's going to be difficult for you. There hasn't been a section of the story. I am now 430 pages into this story so I'm almost the halfway point. There has not been one part of this story where there has been a decent section specifically focused on world building or historical context or things of that nature. And if you don't know, Way of Kings is an extremely dense, complicated, high epic fantasy. There is a lot going on in this story as it's set, but there was also a lot that went on well before the start of the story. There's a lot of historical background that's very important to the current events of the story, but you don't know any of that as you're reading. And that's very difficult for me because I can't just go along 
along in a story and be confused. I need to understand why something is happening in order for me to continue to enjoy the story because otherwise I'm just going to be confused. I'm just going to be questioning what I'm reading and why I'm reading it. What I have found has helped me a lot. There is an entire wiki dedicated to the Cosmere and the Stormlight archives and so what I have been doing is when I'm coming upon words and phrases that I don't really understand, I'm going to the wiki and I'm looking at it and then one page will lead to another will lead to another. And so now I've gotten a strong historical context for how it was in the world before now and like some of the things that are actively happening in the world that I wouldn't understand as well if I hadn't done that research. So when I say that I'm studying for this book, that is what I mean. I am legitimately doing a lot of digging and a lot of reading trying to just understand certain things that I wouldn't otherwise understand. Because even though this is a very slow burning book, like it's a thousand pages, so it is very much moving slowly. Like I said, I'm almost halfway and we still really haven't gotten to the crux of the story. Like I still don't even know what the point of the story is, the story is about, what the ultimate end goal is. I do know that we're following three main characters, we're getting three different perspectives, but they're all separate at this point and I don't know how they're all going to end up connecting and what importance they're going to play to one another and the world and things like that. So it is very very slow burn and there's definitely a lot to take in and so you are getting a lot of bits and pieces scattered in throughout this book but there's never a clump of information about the world or about what happened before, what's going on now, why things are the way they are or anything like that. You really have to piece together all of this information as it is being dropped for you. And so I just kind of wanted to come on here and chit chat about that to say that if you are a reader like me, I highly recommend utilizing some of these additional resources that are kind of like, I don't know, kind of cliff notes to help you out with this because it has helped me immensely. And at first I didn't really know what connected to another. You know, I would just start reading and I would hear these words or phrases and then I would go to the wiki and the wiki would define what I was reading, but then I would still be confused about something else. And so I, I would click, click, click and click. Do I risk spoilers in this way? Yes, I do, but I find it worth it. If it helps me to understand the story that I'm reading and it helps me to stop being confused. I have just been reading like chapter by chapter summaries of a story and analysis of the story and then when I don't understand something or I don't understand a reference that a character made in the book, I will go to the wiki page and I will look into it to see what they're talking about. So that was just a very long-winded way of saying I am very much enjoying Way of Kings. It is a very dense, slow-burning story but yet I'm not getting all of the information that I would have liked to have been given up front. And the wiki pages have helped me immensely and so I highly, highly recommend. All right, I'm gonna stop yammering on. I will check in with you a little bit later, hopefully when I have an actual reading update. Hi friends, it is Monday morning and as promised, I wanted to come on here and give you an update now that I have finally finished Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. So I admit that for the majority of my reading experience with this book, I was really conflicted about how I felt because once I was finally able to get into it, like I, I was into it, I was there in the story, I was following, I was paying attention, but I will say that in my opinion, not much happened in this story until probably the last maybe hour, hour and a half of the audiobook. Sure, there were things sprinkled in here and there, like bits and pieces of information to help Amelia get to the truth of what happened to her sister, which is the whole point of these stories, really. And so things are happening in the background. Little things are sprinkled here and there that's leading her closer and closer to these answers. But for the most part, what this was overall was just a back and forth, will they, won't they, between Prince Wrath and Amelia. There were multiple scenes, probably more than I can count on one hand, where they start going at it, they start getting intimate, and then are thwarted in one way or another, whether by themselves or some outside force. But it was just so much back and forth, will they, won't they, throughout the entirety of this book. That's really all that this was. So part of me understands the need for the second book, just because there was a lot that was revealed towards the end of the story, but also part of me is wondering whether this could have just been done in a duology. Now, of course, I haven't read the third and final book, so I don't know what it's contained. Like maybe the third and final book from start to finish is just action packed full of a lot of answers and resolutions and you're really getting what you need to get from that third book. But I just don't feel like there was enough in the second book to have justified a whole second book. So overall, I think I am going to go ahead and settle on a four stars because the ending of the story was very, very strong and the direction that it's taking, there was a twist. It's going in a really interesting direction and I want some answers. But overall, especially based on the last hour or two of the audiobook, it was an overall strong reading experience and I'm now definitely ready to go into the third book. Again, this satisfied the prompt of Cordelia to read a beautiful book. This also satisfied a TBR prompt for my TBR game of reading a beautiful book. So those worked out nicely. And now I'm moving on to Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. This is a historical fiction that is based on the real life events of babies basically being stolen from their birth parents and adopted out 
out to like rich wealthy people who couldn't have babies and I'm really intrigued I've never read anything on this topic before it's not necessarily something that has been of interest to me but we're gonna see I've heard nothing but great things about this story it is definitely highly praised and because of that I wanted to go ahead and give Lisa Wingate a try as a historical fiction author she's one of the authors that I wanted to try in 2023 so we're gonna be able to go ahead and get that out of the way but we're also going to be able to satisfy Durkindestad to read a book that is for children or based heavily around children everything is going well making progress but as always y'all I have to go and get to work and I will check in with you when I have some more updates Hey y'all, it is Friday morning. I'm just about to head into work, but I wanted to go ahead and come on here and give you an update. The sun is shining really brightly over there, so I'm sorry if my face gets really bright. I am failing miserably at this week's vlog. I think it's just because work has been so crazy and draining, and when work gets like this, when I'm just like nonstop all day, I don't really have room to think or do anything else because not only is it busy at work, but then I feel like I'm still trying to catch up the whole entirety of the day, and I still have to worry about all of the other things that I have to do, and it just doesn't feel like it's slow down at all but I have finished Before We Were Yours and that story ended up being a lot more poignant and harrowing than I was expecting it to be and it kind of snuck up on me in terms of enjoyment like the entirety of the time I was enjoying what I was reading like I was never bored or wishing I wasn't reading the story but I didn't feel emotionally connected to it and there was never a point where I was like dying to pick it back up but yet when I wasn't reading about it I was thinking about it I was thinking about the characters and what they were going through and how a lot of the stuff that happened in this book is based on real life events of children actually being basically stolen from their parents and sold to people who couldn't have children of their own and in between the time they were taken from their parents and sold they were often living in terrible conditions they were being treated horrifically oftentimes they were being abused and it is estimated that like 500 kids died while in the care of Georgia Tan or one of the people that worked for her and that is absolutely astonishing to me I can't even believe it and then you think of all the thousands that were actually adopted out now some of those children legitimately did need other homes like they weren't taken they were legitimately signed over because the parents parents couldn't care for them but I would say a very strong percentage like maybe even the majority I don't know were taken like they had parents that loved them and wanted them they might not have lived in the best conditions but they were loved and wanted and they were taken and like she was being protected actually she was being protected by people in power politicians lawmakers things like that it is absolutely insane that somebody was allowed to get away with that so it ended up being a really beautiful and harrowing poignant story that I very much enjoyed reading overall and I look forward to reading more from Lisa Wingate in the future I am now currently reading Fly Away by Kristen Hanna. This is the sequel to Firefly Lane. If you're not familiar, Firefly Lane is, it's basically historical fiction. It follows the 30-year friendship of Tully and Kate. They meet in the 1970s and it documents their 30-year friendship and all of the trials and tribulations they go through. And I don't really want to give any spoilers away, but if you've read it, you know that it is actually a very sad book. It ends in a very sad way. Fly Away basically follows the characters after the events of Firefly Lane and basically how the characters are coping with what happened. And the answer is not well. They've all basically fallen apart and it's kind of frustrating at points in all honesty because they're making horrific decisions and they're all being extremely selfish in their grief and not thinking about anybody else. So it's not necessarily easy to read. It wouldn't be easy to read anyway because this is 100% about grief. So, so far I'm enjoying it, but yet not enjoying it because I'm frustrated by some of these characters, but I want to see what happens. Like I want to see it all come together and I'm glad to be back with a lot of these characters again. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. That's what I'm going to do. But for now I have to go ahead and head into work y'all. It is Friday. I'm so 
so glad that this week is done with. So I'm gonna go knock out some work and I will check back in with you when I have some more updates. Hey fam, it is Saturday morning and I'm just about to go get my nails done, but it doesn't look like this vlog is going up tomorrow on Sunday. Like I've been doing, I've been maintaining weekly vlogs for the last three or so weeks and it's been going pretty well. But this past week has just been so incredibly draining both mentally and physically and I am just like exhausted. And I know that I've been neglecting the vlog a little bit. Like I don't even know what all footage I have or anything like that. And I can feel myself hitting a wall. I can feel myself getting really, really burnt out and just feeling really meh and blah. And so I'm not going to force myself to try to put all of the footage from this last week together and scramble to get it up for tomorrow. So I think I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a bi-weekly vlog. And additionally, I don't know how much updating I'm actually going to do this weekend. We don't really have any plans. I think I might be going to Barnes & Noble after getting my nails done to do a little bit of self-care book shopping. I don't typically shop at Barnes & Noble just because I think their prices are outrageously expensive and I usually can't justify it, but like I think my soul needs it. But other than that, I'm just going to go like right home and, and possibly take a nap just relax, do some self-care, be kind, give myself some grace. And so I think I'm just going to kind of like give myself a break this weekend. I do still plan on filming videos tomorrow. Sunday's typically my filming day. I do have the wrap up that I have to film for April. So I do plan on doing that. But like overall, I don't have much going on this weekend and I don't think I'm going to update the vlog too terribly much. So that's the plan. Going to get my nails done, then possibly some book shopping and then just home, just home to relax and chill and try to decompress before the start of the next work week, which is also going to be busy as is the week following. So the next two weeks are going to be very, very busy at work. So I need to relax a little bit and just take it easy, but I will definitely check in probably at least once before the start of the week, but I don't know. There's just not much going on. I'm not going to really have much reading updates. I'm just going to try to finish Fly Away by Kristen Hanna. That's really all I'm going to be doing this weekend reading wise. So as soon as I have more updates, I will probably let you know, but other than that, you might not hear from me until Monday. But anyway, y'all, I'll check in with you at some point soon in the future. Hi friends, it is Monday, May 1st. I am actually currently getting ready for work, just kind of moseying around. I'm going in two hours later all this week because the woman who typically drops by in the middle of the day to let our dogs out of the crate to go to the bathroom is gone for this week. My husband definitely works too far away in order to make like a lunch stop and I work just far away enough that it wouldn't be feasible for me to come home at lunch either. And since my husband is working later these days for the time being, our dogs can't just like stay in their crates for all of this time. So we hire somebody to come in and let them out for a little while. And because she's going to be gone, I'm going in later to kind of compensate for the fact that my husband is going to be home later. And so since I am going in later and I definitely have more time this morning, instead of rushing to give you an update in my car outside of my work building, I thought that I would actually just sit down and give you a proper update, especially since I didn't really do any updates this weekend. Like I said, in that brief clip that I posted on Saturday. So as I kind of mentioned throughout last week and in Saturday's clip, the work week last week really just exhausted me mentally and emotionally it was extremely busy. There were definitely some complicated things and some negative things, but for the most part, it was just that there were a lot of things in general happening. And then there were just some of the more emotionally draining things that typically happen when you are serving people. I'm an academic advisor and I typically have a portfolio of about three to 400 students at any given time. And there's a lot of responsibilities that I have for my students because I have them from when they first start at my university to when they graduate and everything that comes in between. And I'm not only just responsible for like their class scheduling, but I'm responsible for any paperwork that needs to be done for them for whatever situation. I also do like all of their transfer evaluations and things like that. So there's a lot of responsibility that I have for my students. And so I'm constantly busy. And it's one of the reasons why I'm checking my email at 5.30 in the morning and I'm checking my email at nine o'clock at night because I just have so many students that rely on me. And we're currently in a really busy period. So there are just a lot of things going on. I'm being hit in multiple different directions. And this just happens sometimes. Busy work weeks come, there's a lot going on. And when that happens, I don't have a lot of extra bandwidth to do additional things. 
things. And if it had just been that, it probably wouldn't have been as big of a deal. Yes, I would have been mentally drained. But on top of that, for the past couple of weeks, I've just had this very overwhelming feeling of discouragement and kind of a blah, meh, indifferent type of feeling. And I think a lot of that might actually be coming from comparison. You know, they say that comparison is the thief of joy and that's absolutely true. Like you're never supposed to compare yourself to others because your journey looks different from them. But it's still really discouraging when you're seeing other people that you, you love and care about and you genuinely want to see them succeed. But when you are working so hard and you're putting everything, your time, your energy, your love, your commitment, your dedication into something and it's just not improving, it's not progressing, it's not going in the direction that you want it to go, but yet other people's are. It's a very heavy emotion to feel. And so I've just been kind of feeling that over the past couple of weeks with certain things in my life. And it just really compounded last week. So by Friday of last week, I was just done. I was mentally, emotionally, physically done. I hit a wall. I hit a wall really, really hard last week. And so that's why no vlog went up on Sunday. I'm still trying to keep the content at two videos a week. So hopefully that's good. And I've just recently discovered shorts and I'm kind of having some fun playing around with those. So I might post a couple of those here and there. Nothing like fancy or super creative because that's just not me. But if you want to see anything in shorts, just let me know. But aside from that, I actually do have a reading update for you because I finished Fly Away by Kristen Hanna last night. It did end up being a more solid reading experience than I was expecting it to just based on my disgust for the characters in this story. I can't really say much about what this is about because it would be spoilers for Firefly Lane. But Firefly Lane, that is a story of deep friendship, lifelong friendship, soulmate type friendship. And something very sad happened at the end. Fly Away is really following these characters in the aftermath and what happens. And you can see that they're all making terrible decisions. They are falling apart in light of what happened in Firefly Lane. And it made them really hard to root for. It made them really hard to follow. But Kristen Hanna just has such a magic of bringing these characters to life. And so they absolutely felt real. You felt like you were following their journey just like you did in Firefly Lane. At some points it was very frustrating and aggravating because you didn't like them and you didn't like what they were doing and you just kind of wanted to shake them and tell them to get over themselves and snap out of it. But then of course, as the story progressed, everything started to kind of come together and I started to be more appreciative of the story. So by the ending of it, I did feel like it was a solid four star read. I felt like everything came together really beautifully and it was just another touching depiction of grief and what it can do to you when you lose somebody that you love and how you need to have like a strong support group in order to stick with you during the hard days and to kind of pull you out of it when you need that. I'm glad to just be done with it because I think I need some palette cleansers at this point. I am moving on into the writing retreat by Julia Bart because that is actually the next prompt for Slayer Fest that I have to satisfy. But also I want to be back in a thriller, you know, something that is not dealing heavily with grief, something that's not quite so dramatic, something that's going to be a little bit more fun and bingeable and easy to fly through. I think my brain just needs that at the moment. So my goal is to finish the writing retreat and that's the life update, the reading update. That is what's going on. This as usual was an extremely long update. I'm going to go keep getting ready to go into work. So I will check up with you when I have more updates. Hi friends. It is Wednesday morning. Once again, I am still going in late this week. So I had some time to update you. I have started and finished the writing retreat and I haven't been giving updates on this story. Oh, sorry. That's my coffee pot. I haven't really been giving updates on my reading experience with the story or what it's about or anything like that, because this is actually part of a vlog that I'm doing that is running the entire length of this year. There are some books that I'm going to be reading throughout this year that are going to be more fully explained in those vlogs, but I can tell you what it's about. So the writing retreat by Julia Bart is following our main character, Alex. She's in her thirties and she's kind of feeling stuck. She's in the publishing industry, but she's always wanted to be a writer, but that's not going very well for her. A lot of her friends are finding success. She is just not. And it's been worse the past year. She's had a lot of writer's block the past year after falling out with her best friend, Ren. And then she's being given a once in a lifetime opportunity. She has been selected to join this very exclusive writing retreat that is being hosted by her favorite author, Rosa Vallo, who's a very notoriously outspoken, but also reclusive feminist horror author. She is holding a writing retreat at her estate in upstate New York. And the estate is definitely one of those that has its own kind of history, like where brutal murders occurred and things like that. And she is selecting four or five women to go ahead and participate in this retreat. And the only catch for Alex is that Ren, her best friend, has also been selected. And so she's going to have to be at this writing retreat with her best friend with whom she's had a falling out. Once they all get to the retreat, a bombshell is kind of dropped on them. They are told that they are not going to be allowed to work on anything that they currently had in progress. They are going to start from scratch. They are going to be expected to write 3,000 words 
words a day. And by the end of the month, they are going to have a fully realized novel and the best novel is going to be selected. And the author of that novel is going to be given a life changing six figure publishing deal. And so naturally this definitely changes everything about the writing retreat. It changes the vibe of the retreat. It is now a lot more stressful. It is a lot more competitive. And so the girls are all buckling down. They're trying to get things done. Some weird things are happening at the estate and with Rosa. There are a lot of eccentricities about Rosa and her methods are very unconventional and things kind of escalate one night when they're all hanging out and they realize that Rosa has dosed their drinks with LSD. And she has done this of course without their knowledge and she has done this because she says that it's going to like open their minds and it's going to remove any creative blocks and a lot of them are really not happy about this. So here they are, they're tripping on LSD and by the end of the night one of them goes missing. And so all of the participants kind of band together to try to find this missing participant and as they do they're finding some very sinister things out about the estate where they're located as well as Rosa and her motivations and things like that. So like I said I'm not really going to say too terribly much here about my overall thoughts and feelings of the story. It wasn't as amazing as I was expecting it to be. I was expecting it to be one thing and it was different. I was I think I was expecting it to be a little bit more Agatha Christie-esque more like One by One by Ruth Ware or An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. It definitely wasn't. It was a lot different and I'm not necessarily mad about it. Julia Bartz definitely took us in a very creative unique direction that I wasn't expecting and I even kind of enjoyed the twist when you find out more about what the writing retreat is actually about but at the same time there was a lot of weirdness in the story that I just couldn't connect to and I just couldn't get behind. Like I said I'm going to save more of my thoughts and my overall rating for that vlog so you're just going to have to be patient you're just going to have to stick it out until I've actually finished the vlog which you know who the hell knows when that's going to be but that is the book that I have recently finished that is going to satisfy the prompt of Maggie Walsh to read a book featuring morally great characters and this 100% does like almost none of the characters in here I feel are very likable so that is the seventh pairing down for Slayer Bus and so I think next I'm going to be starting a school for good mothers or or something like that I can't remember by Jessamine Chen this is the book club pick for the bookworm bitches book club on Goodreads that I help moderate it's not a story that I'm truly interested in it was never on my radar but because it's May's selection I need to go ahead and read it and get it out of the way and luckily it will satisfy the prompt of Joyce to read a book featuring a strong mother character or focusing heavily on mothers and I didn't really have a solid pick for that anyway so it just kind of works out perfectly but since it's not something that I really truly wanted to read I'm gonna go ahead and just get it out of the way that's gonna be next I am getting ready to head out to work but I just wanted to come on here and give you this update about what I'm reading what I'm doing how things are going but anyway I have to head to work I will check in with you of course later. Hi friends, it is Friday, May 5th, and I just wanted to come on here and officially close out the vlog and give you a final reading update. I am so terribly sorry that I have neglected this vlog the past couple of weeks. I know that it is fairly lackluster overall, and I'm sorry I did what I could to just try to salvage it. I still do plan on vlogging throughout Slayer Fest, but I might not be able to do weekly reading vlogs as I was trying to do. They may have to be bi-weekly, but it just kind of depends on like what's going on during the week and how much footage I have. Like if I get through a week and I hardly have any footage, or if I don't have time to edit that footage I might do bi-weekly but if I do have enough footage and I can edit it in time I will do weekly. It's just gonna kind of have to be like a play it by ear thing. I really do love doing these reading vlogs. I love being able to like sit down and chit chat with you in the middle of the week. I just don't know if they're worth it if there's not a lot of extra things going on. Like I don't know how much you just want me to kind of be a talking head in these videos so you'll just have to let me know what you think because I can sit here and just talk with you and reading updates all day long but I don't know how interesting that is for you. But anyway reading update. I have since started and finished the School for Good Mothers by by Jessamine Chan and unfortunately I'm going to have to agree with the majority of ratings on this and I just gave it a three stars. I found it to be a very mediocre and unsatisfying read which is unfortunate because I will say that when this book first started I was into it. I was really liking the writing style of the author and I was really fascinated by the overall premise of the story but then overall the book just started to be very long and repetitive. It was very dry and flat, very emotionless and so the execution of this was not done very well in my opinion. It could have been so much more and it just wasn't. So this is a slightly dystopian story. It is basically set in current day and time and almost everything is the same except there is now a lot more government oversight and overreach in terms of parenting. Child and Family Services is really cracking down and even the most minor of infractions can basically put you on the government's radar and you can have your child taken away from you. And that's basically what happened to our main character although her infraction wasn't exactly minor. We're following our main character Frida Liu. She is a 39 year old exhausted single mother of an 18 month old named Harriet 
it and basically her husband left her like only two months after giving birth to Harriet because he'd fallen in love with a 20 something like Pilates instructor and he has now started a whole new life with her and so Frida is finding herself having to share joint custody with her husband and she's still trying to work full time and spend as much time with Harriet as she can and overall she's a pretty good mother she loves her daughter immensely and hasn't really done anything egregious up until the start of the story when after several nights of insomnia she hasn't been sleeping and Harriet has been particularly fussy and difficult to deal with Frida kind of succumbs to the need to have some peace and to be on her own and so she decides one day she's been working remotely from home part-time so she can be with Harriet she decides one day that she's going to leave her house and just go get a coffee really quick something stronger than she can make at home and she could just go out and grab some coffee and come right back she'd be gone just a handful of minutes but then she realizes she needs to go to her office to grab some paperwork that's not on her computer and again she was only supposed to be gone like a half hour maybe but then she gets distracted by emails and she ends up being gone for like two and a half hours at the time Harriet is like securely in you know like a baby contraption so it's not like she can really do anything or go anywhere but you know she starts crying incessantly and a neighbor hears and ends up turning Frida into the police Harriet is immediately taken away from her and Frida is basically put under constant surveillance her whole life is basically put under a microscope and scrutinized there are cameras installed in her home she's really not allowed to see Harriet at all except for I think it's like once a month she gets to see her for one hour and they are supervised visits by a social worker so it's just like a nightmare from the very beginning and it's determined at the end of these 90 days that Frida is a candidate for these new reform schools basically rehabilitation centers for bad parents and so for a year Frida is being sent to this rehabilitation school and the expectations that they have there are completely astronomical and unrealistic it's insane this is meant to be a very exaggerated and almost at times satirical commentary on the extreme expectations that society has for mothers and how scrutinized mothers are by society and even other mothers so this rehabilitation school for a whole year Frida is going to be locked up in the school she can't have a cell phone she barely has any contact with her daughter whatsoever she's basically going to be taught how to be a good mother and they are rigorously going through all of these standards for being a good mother and her emotions are being monitored and it is absolutely ridiculous and worst of all is she's being taught how to be a good mother by people who are not mothers I really thought that it was truly insightful and spoke heavily on how we judge mothers these days and how everybody has their own opinion on what it means to be a good mother and how you should parent your children and so Frida is in this rehabilitation school with people who have infractions that are way more minor than hers but also way worse than hers but they're all like being treated the same there is no differentiation and it was absolutely ridiculous and it truly is a nightmare it is really disturbing to think about that something like this could happen and overall as I mentioned I found this concept absolutely fascinating but for the most part the execution was just so lackluster the majority of this book is spent at the rehabilitation school and it was so incredibly drawn out and repetitive like she's at the school for a year it felt like I was reading this book for a year just every single month over and over what they were learning at the school what they had to do at the school Frida failing at the school and all of this stuff it was just it was just a lot and again it was very emotionless flat dry it was told from a third person perspective and I think this really could have done with a first person narration to give it a little bit more connection and personality and as I mentioned it was just so long and drawn out and perhaps what gets me the most about this story I felt like it had a very unsatisfactory ending I really felt like by the end of the story I had no idea what the point of the story was I'm gonna give spoilers here for a second so if you don't want to be spoiled wait until the book picture is off the screen Frida gets done with this school and even though she's done a pretty remarkable job with some only minor infractions they basically don't think that she should be given her daughter back like it is that extreme you have to be absolutely perfect you have to have the right emotions the right inflection in your voice you have to hug them the appropriate amount it is it is insane and after all that she does she is still not deemed worthy to get her child back and so you know what this actually means she doesn't get to see her daughter until she's 18 and her daughter has to seek her out like that's how severe it is if you are not deemed worthy of getting your child back you don't even get joint custody you don't even get supervised visits you are just completely cut off from your child which of course is mind-blowing right so if Frida gets out of the school she is told that she's not going to get her daughter back and so what does she do she basically kidnaps her daughter she kidnaps her daughter and she's taking her daughter on a ride and that's basically how it ends but it doesn't even end on like a, okay I'm gonna kidnap you and we're gonna live a beautiful life together it ends on a okay I've kidnapped you and we're gonna spend some time together but then I'm gonna take you back and that's it okay what is the point of the story what are we supposed to learn from the story I get the commentary but I still don't understand like why this book was told what was the purpose of this ending what did Frida overall learn about her experiences what is her life going to be like like there was really no resolution to the story overall after everything that we were dragged through and that's what really really got me about it so even though I like that this book really made me think it was a fascinating idea and I was really invested at first and I could have stayed invested but it just the execution was poor in my opinion I didn't understand by the end what I was supposed to get out of the story as a reader and 
and so I think I'm only gonna give it a three stars. I do think that this is a story that might stick with me just in terms of detail. Like, I don't think this is something I could potentially forget because it was very unique. It just got boring at some points, very redundant, very repetitive, and I was just ready for it to be done when it was done. That's my reading update. I am not entirely sure what I wanna read next. I feel like I need a palette cleanser. Like, I don't necessarily know if I wanna jump into another Slayer Fest read. I do still need to read those two K.A. Tuckers, but I don't also know if I'm in the mood to read a K.A. Tucker. So I will just have to let you know when I open the next vlog. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. I hope that you enjoyed what I was able to include in this. If you made it to the end of this vlog, post your favorite emoji down below. What are some of your favorite emojis? I would love to know. Post them in the comments down below. And until next time, y'all, I will check in with you later.